So, in general, we're going to talk about defending option. Obviously, um, we don't see as much zone read as maybe you guys do, but this is true flexible and triple option. I mean, Georgia Tech, Paul Johnson, the whole deal. So, hopefully, that's what you guys were expecting. Um, you know, earlier in that first session, I said we were a 3 4 defense. Um, I think it's important. We, we had a staff come and visit us on Wednesday who lost to Somerset in the second and third round of the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we, I love doing that type of stuff, but about 10 minutes in, he told me, well, we're not going to change our defensive scheme for the triple option. And I, I think that's a completely wrong way to look at it. Um, I mean, that's a new, it's a unique offense. So I think you have to do some things that may be a little bit different. And I know you might not have the time to put something new in, but you can still give them a different look. And I think that's the most important thing. I think that's the thing we do really well is that quarterback gets a different look almost every play. And it's not from our defensive line. We want those guys to be physical. We tell those guys all week, your one job is to kick the shit out of the guy in front of you. You know, our linebackers and our secondary will be the guys that maybe have different responsibilities each play. Because we want that 21-year-old kid to make a decision. Because most of the time, it's, you know, it's not always going to be right. And it could be the wrong one. So, thanks, Coach. So, I think first things first. And we preach this in defense in general, but I think this is extremely important. Not to pick on anyone. Do you mind telling me what that last thing says to you? Opportunity is nowhere. So, everything is the way you look at it, right? Well, our guys would say opportunity is now here. And I think that's important, and I don't mean to pick on you, but the first day our, our safety was an all-region kid, he said opportunity is nowhere. And I, I think that's important, from, from, especially against an option team, to make sure your eyes are right. I mean, eyes are the key to everything, right? Defensive line play, linebacker play, safety play, offensive scheme. And eyes are important, but I, I think that, that's important. How you vision things and how you look at things, I think you guys are hoping that, in your mind, it, it's the way that you want it done, but does that guy see it the same way? Is he looking at this scheme the same way that we look at it from the booth or from on the field? When we're watching film until 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I know we draw all this stuff up but on Saturdays or Friday nights or in the playoffs, are they now seeing it the same way you do? Now, I know this is base stuff, that's clinic stuff, but rule number one for us is don't go until you know. And even against an option team, besides our defense line, if our linebackers don't know, we want them just to bounce their feet and find out what's going on in the backfield. Because I think now, especially with counter option and, and maybe some wing T stuff that you guys are facing, we don't see that, and you get buck sweep or some type of counter crisscross. Well, if the guy makes an assumption, and we all know the old old phrase, right? When you assume make an ass out of you and me, well, you know, a play where he may think that he's supposed to do this, they come back and, and react to what we're doing. He makes an asset to everyone. And obviously, you probably don't win a lot of those games. You know, and this is just something that we live by. We call it the matrix. I don't say everyone has different terms for it. But when the bullets are flying, when the bullets are flying, our guys know these simple rules. Obviously, this column doesn't pertain as much to triple option. But their gap and their option responsibility, at least in this, this clinic talk, our guys know that. If I ask our defense vents or C-gap players, He's going to tell me quarterback asterisk. And why is it quarterback asterisk? Because we tell that guy to feather that. You know, he's going to play dive to quarterback based on what he sees. I'll never, ever get mad at him if he tackles the dive and the kid pulls it. Unless that's not what his responsibility is. Okay, because then I know that that kid is playing fast. And if you can play just a little bit faster than a triple option team, I don't know many triple option teams that go really fast in the huddle. Maybe you guys see it. We don't, at least when we play Rick in college every year. But these guys know. Our eight-gap players, they know their dive. They're dive the whole way. Our, our middle linebacker that we play at seven yards, we'll talk about a lineman in a minute. You know, he's playing dive all the way. Now, if the quarterback pulls it and he can read that, do we want him to be an added guy? Well, yeah, because they can't account for it. Maybe now he can add in and make a play down the line or vice versa. You know, and D oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. And then D gap for us, always gonna be pitch players. And this is our corners to our safeties for what it's worth. Okay? You just go to the next slide. But option counts. And I think this is extremely important. My first ever job was at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, Chris McKinney, he was at Springfield College when they were really, really good playing in the lead eight, the final four, the uh, NCAA Division Three playoffs. Just an option genius that you know the 
the guy was very, very smart. My first ever job at 22 years old, though I was the D-line coach, in my eyes, I wanted to learn this shit. Because let me tell you, this is a pain in my ass. And I know it's a pain in yours. This is the worst thing to defend. And if you run it, you guys are doing a great job. Because let me tell you, it is the worst, at least in my eyes, being the defensive coordinator and all of our coaches. This is the worst week. This is the worst week. And, and I truly believe you can't prepare for this on a Monday if you're playing on Friday. You know, and I know now everyone's running option. I'm assuming in your fall camps and stuff that you guys watch, you guys are constantly talking about option play. If you're not, though, and I know there's a bunch of ways to skin a cap, but in my eyes, if you're not talking about option play from day one, I think you're doing your kids a disservice. But the perimeter count is important, and we'll show some slides, and you'll probably see a front that maybe you played against an option team. And from my experience, the guy that I learned it from, that quarterback has to look to see the wing backs, have the slot backs, whatever you're calling, have to look to see the perimeter wide receivers have to look to see who they're supposed to block. And it's either going to be a load or a base. And all that means now is, do I have a count of one, two, three across the center? Or do I have a count to the play side, one, two, three? And I'll show you a little bit uh, the next slide after, after I explain this, what I'm talking about. But front side, A back. That's what we call him. That's what most option teams call him. You may call him something else. But he needs to always find three. Because three will tell him load or base. If three is past the center, play side to the side they're running, it's usually a base scheme from, a, from their point of view on their blocking scheme. If he's over the center, and everything is predicated, in my opinion, on center, quarterback, and fullback. If, you, if they have three studs, it's going to be a long game for us, for anyone that's playing. And obviously, if you watch that Georgia Tech-Mississippi State game, for as fast as Mississippi State was, Georgia Tech did a pretty good job overall. And what they're told is this, base block number two. Because three in their eyes, three in their eyes is going to be a, a pitch read. He's a guy that's probably screaming down, flat foot reading, true quarters, robber safety, that's just flying down, making a play. If it's low, they're, they're going to secure the second level and then work to three. Because three is now coming from across the field. And we do some different things with our safeties that I'll show you that I think helps us. But then again, I'm going to show you some clips from this year's Ripping game and from when I was at Bridgewater when we played Springfield that it didn't always work. And it's not always going to work. And then I don't know how many of you guys play a press hard corner to this stuff. We do a little bit, especially if we're going to play man coverage, <coughs> man free. Well, sometimes they may give a box call. And all that means is they're going to replace the A back to go block that hard corner, and they're going to push crack to your safety, which really puts some serious strain on that corner if he doesn't replace that. And obviously, I don't know how you're teaching it, but in our eyes, if I'm the corner and this back and this uh, split end is right in front of me, if he makes any maneuver down, and we slice our corner a lot in our normal uh, coverage to the boundary, if he makes any move, any slash release inside, he's staying square, and his eyes are going right to the backfield motion. Because we want him to disrupt it, and we have a corner crash we run. It worked. It's worked the last couple of years. I have two clips. One, it could have been very, very bad. Luckily, our offensive, uh, our defensive lineman got a hand up in the air. So, <coughs> Thanks, left. so just a couple of things that I'm talking about. You might just turn. In, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't know if you can see it or not. But. In the next two slides, I'm assuming you guys. Have, I mean, maybe you don't. Maybe you play something differently. If you've got a better answer, believe me, I would love to know. And. I love talking about this stuff because like, I keep saying this stuff is a pain in the ass, but you guys probably align in something similar to this. Now you may call these guys differently, I understand that, but, but your secondary, your linebackers, they're, they're playing some type of game. Okay? We're always in a 4-3 back route. It helps us because now our outside linebackers can play. And from an alignment standpoint, not always, but we're usually in this base look for us. Okay, we're playing two five techniques, a three, and a two eye. We do have some calls where we'll put a nose on it, and all that means is now he's kicking down to a zero. You know, especially if that guy's whooping our inside, our middle linebacker's ass. If that guy's getting to him every play and cutting him, we have the ability to cap that right now and stop it. Our outside linebacker, from an alignment standpoint, this, this drawing is not you know, drawn uh, to scale, but we're going to play off the wing back one by four. Play him a little bit closer. And his eyes are always on that guy. Now, if they condense the formation of play a tight end, we'll do some different things. We don't see that. 
you know, luckily, but if they do, and if you have questions on that, we can definitely talk about that. But his eyes are always on that guy. That guy's going to tell him what's going on. If he's not in motion, in orbit motion, like we call it, he's going to do three things. He's going to come right at you, he's going to go outside, or he's coming inside. And every read will tell him to do something differently. If he's coming right at him, he's just taking him on, outside arm and leg free, he's squeezing and he's setting an edge. A true three, four outside linebacker setting an edge. Okay, keeping everything inside because we got help. If he's out wide, he takes one mirror step to get wide and he takes two steps down. So now he's about two yards hopefully off the ball, off the original line of scrimmage because he's not worried about that guy. They're reading me now. I'm probably the pitch key. If he's in, it's probably some type of midline or load option, double option from their standpoint. We're going to mirror and we're just going to fit it in like it would be a fullback and ISO. We're going to fit it right in. Because most of the time, if he's in certain, they're probably reading your three technique. Or if you play a two head up, I don't know how you play it. You know, sometimes we'll call heads and we'll rip or lizard, it. But from our standpoint, you're probably reading that three technique. And this guy's coming to insert for him. So we want to make his job really easy. And we want to stuff and blow that shit up now. Next slide, Coach. And just obviously some other things that you know you maybe could be lining up in, um, and some keys that they're going to get. And obviously, if you guys want this, all if you have huddle, I'll send it to you. So, next slide. So this is number one. This is day one. Now, blues are quarters coverage. So these guys are constantly, constantly hearing the same message. So though our alignments might be a little bit different, when our guys, if I, if you told my secondary. Blue, they're saying quarters. They know it's quarters. We say it max because these guys are never ever really going to help out in coverage. Okay? Just like the outside linebacker, their eyes is to the near wing. If I'm the right, the free safety here, and that guy orbits to my left, we're switching his name, but our strong safety better be the first guy down there. And all it does when that happens. All it does is it turns into a version of cover three, but like I said, he's never ever really going to uh, be in pass coverage. And you know, is this a, a crap shoot? No question. Okay, especially if you're getting post wheel, getting some other stuff. We're telling our corners this, okay, that the side to the motion, so he's going to our left, he has to midpoint one and two. He's got a midpoint one and two. You can do that two ways. You can skate it through and squeeze the sideline. So just skate it through for three, get a little depth, about eight to ten, depending on how much you know, he can skate and how tall your guy is. Or he can simply weave and back pedal it through. And it's very simple. And obviously he's going 60-40 on the inside to outside. So if this is post wheel, we want that guy to throw the wheel ball. That's a low percentage throw. You know, especially if they're gonna give you all this play action stuff. And we were lucky this year, we had, we had two dudes here. So even if they're gonna run pop pass or play action, our nose and our tackle were whooping their ass, so it didn't really matter. And they were, they were setting a new line of scrimmage. Any quick, oh no, 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 go back real quick. Our mic, like I was saying, our mic is over the center always at seven yards. Seven yards, now I'll show you some clips, I think I have one in here, he's at 10 yards one play. I'm okay with that. Because I know Zach is going to read everything. He's not going to go until he knows. He's going to be deep. He's going to read it. And, he, and I know, and we do a good job of this, I think. We don't practice with the ball until Thursday. So he reads it all. He's, he's going to be able to see. He's looking. And I think from his depth, he can almost play B-gap to B-gap. You know, it's a diamond linebacker. You, you know, your true 4-4 four, four deal. And he's not B-gap to B-gap. He can read this. He can see things pulling. He can see back motion, counter motion, the whole deal. Okay, next. You want to just pause it real quick? So, no, it's okay. This one goes back to just the, the deal. Yeah, you can just go right in the middle. Yeah, sorry about that. You have to turn. Sorry about that. Cool. So, this is when I was at Bridgewater State, uh, Springfield College in Massachusetts. These guys are a little bit different. Okay, these guys are a little bit different. Uh, better athletes than, than what we had at St. Norbert for what it's worth. A uh, state school that costs six thousand dollars a year. Imagine that, coach. If you're recruiting guys in school and it costs six grand, you're getting a lot of kids. This kid was a Division II transfer from Bentley University. Um, so even though our safeties were trying to tell him to play at ten, he did whatever he wanted. And you'll see some clips where it worked, but then there's some clips that didn't. And we just want these guys, all eleven. We need them to play fast. 
You know, we want to put you in a position to be successful. If you think, and maybe it's different at our, uh, our level, I don't think it is, even with your, your guys' level, if, if you have a 17-year-old uh, safety that's more comfortable playing at 8, or more comfortable playing at 12, but he's fast enough to, to, um, to close ground, then obviously I think, and most important, they want to be comfortable with this stuff. But if you want to play, and all I want you to watch is just the safety. Though this play gets stuffed up right now, just how aggressive this safety really is. And he's going now, and it's simple. This is blue max, and on blue, they're just bouncing their feet, normal quarters coverage. They're flat foot reading, and they're, mo they're moving. This guy's gone. He's got to be fast. He's got to be fast. And I understand we get it stuffed up, but he's got to play fast. You want to just pause it again right in the middle, right there, yeah. So what we're telling our D-line, I know I don't have a lot of alignment stuff. If you want that stuff, I'm more than help, uh, happy to send that to you as well. But our five technique ends, I was telling you, they just got to whoop the dude's ass in front of them, and I truly believe that. They have one job. If he never makes a tackle, I'm okay with that. But if he eliminates this guy blocking any of our three linebackers, we're going to be in a great position. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. We're going to be in a great position. And it's simple. We're a man hand down defense from a defensive line standpoint. There are some teams that don't do that. I know that's fine. But I think it's much easier now if my first step is at the man I want to strike, and it's easy to put my hand on breastplate, shoulder cuff, and squeeze his ass down. Eliminate him. And I know Coach, uh, Coach Coles is talking about option offensive line play, but eliminate him, veer release it inside, and get to the second level. We have to eliminate the veer release. If this guy, what we call Holly, outside releases, we'll let him do it all day. We're going to let him do it all day. Next slide. Where do I go for next? Oh, you just, I think just tap um, the, uh, the arrow. Deal. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So this is this year, still blue max, still being physical. You can see Danny Egan's moving a little bit. And though he gets cracked, I wanted to show this clip because now with crack replaced, you want to just go back to the, uh, you want to just pause right there? Thank you. Okay, we were bailing so much. Okay, our corners were playing off. Paul Allen, like I said, he had two separated shoulders. This is probably not the best game for him. Okay, but he was going to eliminate the deep throw. I say that, and he had a 52 yard pass over his head, but. Um, fuck. <laughs> That'll get you, right? He has to do a better job. And he needs to do a better job of communication, right? We say eyes are key. Well, so is your mouth. If you have guys back there that don't talk, you have the wrong guys back there. And I understand you have what you have. So do we. We have what we have. But if Paul Allen does not tell Danny Egan, crack, 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 and Danny Egan's an all-region AFCA player. Division three. He's a good player, very good player from Illinois. But he still needs help. He can't see that because his eyes are always on the slot. He can't see if this guy's coming to kill him. Okay? So communication is huge here. But you can see he's starting to creep. This was a big boundary run team. He's starting to creep, he's starting to creep, he's starting to creep. And then when you watch the tight shot, we're doing a great job with our guys, right? We're playing a nose here, three technique of five. I would like a better job on the squeeze, but he's making this kid make a decision now. He's making to make a decision, right? Hey, they want to run option, they want to give themselves options. Well, we need to give them an option. Either you're going to pitch the ball or you're going to pull it down because if you don't, we're blowing the thing up. And I truly believe, I truly believe that if you can eliminate the dive, and I know it's probably clinic talk, but if you can eliminate the dive, you're going to win that football game. Because then, and especially at your level, you're asking a 16, 7 year old kid to make the right read always and have a perfect pitch. It doesn't happen at our level, so I can't imagine it's happening in your guys. And if it is, that kid's pretty good. I'll recruit him, and I'll coach probably will too. Again, just looking at the safety play. Looking at the safety play. And though this is a big game, you can just see, this is, this is only Blue Max, you know, that's a five, six yard game, but it's just our safety. Okay, safety, he's just going now, he's going now, he's going now. Next slide. So this is where we start to play a little bit faster. So we'll have a spin call. Blue Max, we have two corner safeties, flat foot read. Well, when we call spin, opposite the wing back motion, you are running now, you are going. This is not quarters anymore, this is true 3D. So the opposite safety, the safety of the side, the motion starting from, he's running the fence and playing the deep third. You know, this is more of a sure call in my eyes from a standpoint of, hey, you're playing 3D in case they give you post wheel, at least you have help, opposed to Blue Max. Blue Max was a first down call for us. We called that a lot against Griffin in first down. It just helped us. 
Next slide. So again, safety's going when he's moving. So here you go, right? And we tell the guys, we want these guys to play fast. Right? And this was the first question when I put spin up on the board. Want to just pause right there? My right, first question when I put spin up on the board this year, they said, well, what if it's pass? I said, well, let me show you a clip. And this clip, I think, just shows, hey, this kid's playing fast. Is he helping out in pass coverage? No. But it takes a lot of time for them to show a true read, especially a right-handed quarterback, show a true read, turn, square up, and then throw the ball. Though it's an option of run-based offense, they still have reads. They don't just throw the ball up. You know, maybe they do. I don't, I don't think they do. So if he's on a spin and he's playing fast, he's going to add in and be a fifth rusher. I have a quick question. For you. If they're not showing orbit motion, then how are you determining who's, who's the spin, who's the uh, safety coming out? Well, so if we had spin call and they don't orbit, in our eyes, two things could happen. It's probably a true drop back, okay, which then I'm just going to call blue. Let's say it's just third and ten, they're probably not running. Or it's dive. Okay. So dive, we should have it taken care of from these guys, you know, from our five, our interior and our, our Mike linebacker. So our safety should never have to ever ever have to help there. So and, and, and they know this too, and I, and I probably should explain that, so I apologize. It's a good question. Um, if there's no motion and you call block or spin, and we'll go to walk in a minute, well then obviously they're not gonna move. You know, and it's just gonna be blue, it's quarters coverage, they're still gonna flat foot read, and you never know. You never know, you know, and I think that's that's important as well. You know, that's good question. Do you see many flex bone teams that don't show their true motion right away, their orbit motion? No. I mean, and still run the ball, still are able to do Still it. run triple? Yeah. I have it. I mean, I know, I don't know what Wisconsin game I went to. It was Xavier versus someone, but these guys were freaking tight as hell. They played two tights and two wings. And on this, you know, they're they're tilted in on the snap. Then they start to go. If that's what you're, they're sort of yeah, talking about. But that, that's more of a just a double wing. wing. You see a double wing. With yeah. Two tight ends, set two double wing, foot to foot split. But in the flex bone where they are, it looks to me like their splits are pretty generous here. Yeah. And also, if they had the speed on the slap backs or the B backs, whatever you want to call them, the yeah. backs, and yeah. you know, if they can, what would that do to you guys defensively if they don't give you that? you know, kind of tip their hand or tip their head on their motion. Would that make it more difficult for your kids? We would probably only play blue max at knife, and we'll talk about knife in a minute, um, and switch, we would switch call as well. But we would play those guys a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Sure. Because if it's a pass, it's going to take them a little bit more time to develop that, mm -hmm. to have true play action. That's just from my point of view. Yeah. You know, but we're going to move those guys up, so now it's just going to eliminate deeper to shorter, we'll move you up to eight, we'll still bounce, bounce our feet, just play blue. So on the snap, Right, if they're snapping and then now two goes, we're in a better position just to make a play on that pitch right away. Opposed to being at 10, right, not seeing anything and going, oh shit. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I truly believe this, right, you know, just our rule number one, don't go till you know. I hope our guys, if, if nothing happens, they're just at least bouncing their feet and they're doing their day one fundamentals, you know, in terms of our blue coverage. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but move things down a little bit. So again, so we got a spin call. And he needs, needs to now just add in. He's got to add in, and it just helps us now. It helps us. Next slide. We go with spin. Any questions on spin? I will tell you this, and, and, and I know that this stuff can, can screw you, right? And you, and you get a counter here. But we try to tell our guys as well on that orbit motion, unless he truly crosses the, the, uh, the fullback, it's going to be very difficult for them to, to set us up with some type of counter. So when their eyes are looking at this, you know, they start to visualize, he starts to creep down, creep down. If that guy never crossed the fullback, it's probably going back the other way. He's now loading on our overhang. You know, it's just, just sort of a visual thing for them to see always, you know. And we have a play here where in lock, you know, we get screwed with it. Why don't you go to the next slide? So lock, and, and this is this is a crapshoot, um, and it worked for us a couple times, but then, you know, our two longest games this year where we were in lock. But but now from from the picture that I showed you in the option count with the overhang, the one, two, and three, right? They're not accounting for this guy in protection. In their eyes, I think they're assuming 
that, hey, he's going to get washed up, maybe a double down on the nose, or the tackle's going to be released and work to the third level. But on the snap of the ball, when he starts to orbit, if this guy's starting to fly inside out, and then I know the, always the question is this, well, what if they counter it back and you have no pitch player? And, and it happened to us, and it was a huge game, and you know, going back to what I said about spin, you need to make sure this guy is at least in a position where we think the play is going this way. It's the one time we ask these two guys to really think. And I know it's not the best, um, but again, we're just trying to make these guys make a wrong decision. Just like they're trying to make sure we're in the wrong position or you got two guys on the dive, no one on the quarterback and vice versa. So. I'm sorry, D-line does a good job, but you can start to see, you can start to see that the safety's starting to spin now. I mean, he's starting to lock it, he's starting to go. He sees 10 moving, sees 10 moving. And obviously, they, they didn't call the penalty there, but, but he's moving now. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. He was athletic enough to put his foot on the ground, be able to change direction, redirect, and now vision of break and go. Again, lock. One pause right there, Coach. So, and we'll, I'll show you this from the tight copy. But this is when, Rock, when Locke goes wrong. Okay, he leaves a little bit too early. Ryan Graham's a pretty good kid for us. He leaves a little bit too early. But it's the other safety that has to make him right. You got two guys farming the same land. That's never worked. Okay, I joke around our guys. We got a lot of farmers on our team, so they laugh at that. But, but I mean, it's he needs to run the fence. He's got to play middle third. And now if, they, if he makes a tackle at 10 yards, I'm okay with that. But now you have two guys, he's too tight to the line. And now you have two guys basically take, took on by their, their, uh, their slot. And now our corner has to make the play. This is not a game where our corner, in my opinion, should be making many plays unless it's in the pass game. Unless you run a corner crash. But really, those guys should be the true home run hitters. You know, they got to stop the big play like he did here. And obviously, we had a you know, good job setting the edge. And, you know, it's a 15-yard game. Next slide. And I'll show this from the type. Obviously a big play, right? This is when Locke went wrong. Coach, when you call Locke, yeah. is your intent more to, uh, to wipe out a blocker that's leading or to take a receiver out so that you have more freedom in the second year? Well, Locke in my eyes is, is just to get a guy free that they're not accounting for. You know, so it's like we're hoping that by calling Locke, obviously they don't run counter, and I know you saw two counter yeah. plays there, but I wanted to show you the, the negatives of it um, along with the positives. But Locke for us is, you know, here comes over motion, it's going this side. Well, if their perimeter counts system says one, two, three on the base, and they're going, okay, pull, pitch, block him, or pull, block him, pitch, you know, based on their keys. This guy now is inside out. The green nitro, so to speak, what I showed you in the tackling, he's inside out, and hopefully he can make a play he's not accounted for. So if he goes up for a pass, is he locked on then? Is he going to follow him right into the Yeah, just area? like spin, if pass happens and he can see that, he's just going to insert because, okay. you know, he's just that added play. Yeah, just, okay. <coughs> we'll just go to the tights for that. <coughs> <laughs> These guys are assholes. But if you go back just to uh, right here. Great. This safety does not do his job. I understand in true coverage, the middle third would be exactly where he needs to be. But we're looking at middle third as he just needs to get over the center. Because if lock happens and lock goes to shit, he's got to save us now. He doesn't do anything. And this was... You know, and I know I made the comment earlier, we sort of let him do whatever he, whatever he wanted. Well then, you know, I know some guys might say, well, fuck, you should put him on a leash. You know, because cause he freaking, he sometimes would literally do whatever he wanted. Well, this is where it hurt us, right? And I know, and he got reamed for it, and, you know, he needs to now go to the middle. And in our eyes, the middle of the field is over the center, from a 3 deep standpoint, for what it's worth. Because these guys aren't spreading you out, right? Most of their concepts are verticals, post wheel, the post is going to run to that play. Okay, post is going to run to that player. Next slide. Crash. Um, this is a boundary concept. It worked for us. 
Doesn't always, you know, I'll show you the second cl uh, the clip from this year. It could have been very, very bad. Could have been very, very bad. But, you know, the strain is on, on our strong safety. He's really got to move. You know, he's really got to go. And, and that's the one thing. Yeah, you may have to just start that right from the beginning of this okay. city, city clip. But. but you see, we're coming from the boundary here. A little bit tighter as he's going to snap. Pitch, we're blowing it up now. Again, based on count systems, based on count systems, and I know they're in a bone in a little bit different formation, but nonetheless, it would be no different if he was lined up right here. The quarterback's not expecting it, right? It's just another option to stop the, stop the option. Do you run that quite a bit? Uh, we ran it twice this year. Yeah, the first time the wide receiver pointed out, and I don't know if they had a pass already called, but like I said, I'll show you the next clip. Um, was your cornerback just creeping into early? I yeah, mean, I mean, okay. so like I said, we slice our boundary corner <coughs> in the run game, and, and we don't want him to show anything. We're playing, we're playing press. On the snap, he's taking that outside foot, putting his back to his chest, and he's just simply skating and sliding it in. That's what we're expecting from him. I mean, it's going to take a little bit for this play to get there. You can see Alex Swanson. Um, he thinks he's too smart for his own good, and, and freaking could have been really bad. And I don't know if they checked that. I don't think they did. But if you go to the, go to the wide again, he's already starting to creep. He's already starting to creep. And if a quarterback can see it, I mean, based on your peripheral, I don't know if he can. You know, it, it definitely can be bad. And obviously, you see his approach. I mean, in our eyes, we call that a loaf. I mean, he's fucking, he's going too slow. I mean, a corner crashed, you got to go. you got to move your ass, right? Anything that we do, you got to go. Especially, especially against these guys. And luckily, we had these guys. Uh, you know, our defensive line just swung the ball down. Next clip. Any questions on, on corner crash? You know, that, that's a two, three call a game, you know, for what it's worth. Switch call. So all we're doing now is we're switching the outside linebacker and the safety's responsibility. You know, this is third quarter, right? All of a sudden, they, they go into half them, they go, okay, we know how we're gonna, they're going to line this up. Right away. This guy's always going to quarterback, always going to pitch. Well, we switch it. We make this guy have to make a decision. We hope it's the wrong one. This one could have been a bad play. Luckily, you know, we ended up getting the quarterback down. He's going right to pitch now. Right? He needs to work a little bit more width, and he needs to be downhill. You can see right now, we got two guys almost forming the same land, but we got great defensive line pursuit. So though our secondary is a huge piece in this, it's getting off blocks, not getting cut, and that's a huge part of the when we get cut. Again, the switch call, you know, we don't call this a lot, we call it a couple times, but it's the ability just to put him on a different player, him put on a different player. You know, so it's a little bit different than what I showed you in the matrix, but still, it's just giving them a different look. Okay? And knife, this was a huge play for us. This now um, is with our uh, end and our outside linebacker. Okay, end and our outside linebacker. The tackles were starting to outside release. Okay, we were playing them so heavy. We were almost playing fours sometimes. They, were, they just could not be released. So they started to outside release and get us wide. So we made about six ninth calls in a row. Because guess what? We'll, go, we'll put it around a quarterback now. That's fine. You want to you bring us to him? Bring us to him. And now our outside linebacker who was key in that wing, no matter what he does, he goes right to dive. A couple times it worked, and then on the goal line, he doesn't go to dive, and they score. You know, luckily, we still got the win, but obviously some things can go wrong there. You can see he's starting to creep a little bit. It's already starting to happen. He's going right to dive. He's going right to that ball's pitch. Our quarterback player, right, is going with it. He's going to get wide. If I pitch that ball, I'm going to give Nate Virgil the least amount of opportunities if I'm an offense. I mean, he's pretty athletic. He can chase things down. And we also had support players with our safeties. Okay, so again, just giving him a different look, doing something on the line that's going to make him think the read's there now. It also works great if they're going to go counter back to the boundary. They were a big counter back to the boundary team. You know, the one thing, when you watch this clip again, one thing you got to be aware of, obviously, is any type of G scheme, any type of kick back, you need to just box that, shiver it with that, with that inside forearm, hold your base, and just really don't move. Okay, you got to have an anchor point to that. This is the goal line where he doesn't do his job. He's a dive player. He gets too far upfield. That play is null and void. We, we ended that play right now unless he pulls it. But if they're going to give the ball, which it looks like here, you know, quarterback is pretty determined to do that, especially later in the game. 
He just has to do his job. He takes two steps, flat foot where he just got to bang his feet, zit his feet, come to balance and look. And don't go till you know. I think he assumed this ball was going to be pitched because of earlier plays when we called knife. Obviously he does the wrong thing and they score. Next. Uh, is that a coach? Is it? I'm not. Yeah, not yeah. anything else. Are there any questions about anything? Anything that you guys do? <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, from our standpoint and how we defend the option, we're using our back end. That may or may not work. Like I said, we had a staff come on on Wednesday, and he didn't trust his back end to make those plays. But then you saw Somerset, and I don't know if anyone here is from Somerset, but you saw Somerset get 12, 15, you know, 20 yard gains because their safeties and corners are just bamboo. You know, and they got guys really deep making plays and hopefully not getting beat by the pass. But, <laughs> you know, their objective in my eyes, based on what they run, is not to throw the ball. And I think that's pretty easy to say. Right, based on what they run. So let's stop what they're good at. I mean, we're going we're gonna to just try to eliminate them. And if they beat us in the pass, and like I said, they hit a 52-yard pass on us. You know, they didn't score that drive, so it worked out. It worked out in our favor. Okay, but I'd rather give up passes all day to an option team than them run for, you know, they were averaging 300-something yards. You know, we got them to 217 that game. You know, so we'll take that. What gives you the hardest, what, what gives you the biggest headache? With a triple out, if you could just pinpoint one counter point. option, counter option. If you if you have guys that are very good, and that's why we obviously when you do tendencies and all that stuff, they were big counter, they were big wing counter and counter option back to the boundary for some reason. In my eyes, that's much easier than to the field, just because you have the 12th defender with the sideline. Mm -hmm. We really preach that, you know. It's like, hey, let's string that fucking thing out, let it go. I have no problem. They get two yard gain on the counter option. I'm okay with that. Um, but if you have a team with really good a backs, especially if you have a backs that that aren't motioning on snap, and they can still effectively run counter option, I'd like to see that. I think that'd be extremely tough. <coughs> um, and to me, that's that's just difficult, you know. Any other questions, guys? Go. Uh, when you get a tight end in the game, are you saying in, a, in like an over front, or do you go to an under front? <coughs> maybe, well, maybe you want to just go to uh. We'll just pull this clip up and I'll just do it. Yeah. Really pause real quick. Okay. So if this split end now is a tight end, right? Apologize. So if this guy's a tight end here, okay? All I said from an adjustment standpoint is we're just gonna walk him out and he's playing a nine technique on the tight end. So he's now not two by three or one by four. You know, our alignments might may always change, especially if we're, if we're leading, we wanna just keep the things in front of us. He's gonna play a nine technique and he's gonna strike just like he would if he was a defensive end. He's just gonna squeeze that thing down and play quarterback right there. He's gonna play quarterback from that alignment. And then it's, really, it's gonna give you more of a 61 look. Uh, luckily, when I was at Bridgewater, when we played Springfield, they used a lot of tight end. Um, to the boundary, and then we'll run a counter option to the boundary, which they start to pin pole that wing, and that's, that fucks you a little bit, especially if your corner isn't aggressive. Um, but these guys did not use a tight end. These guys were 92% flex bone, this formation. So you talked about what hurts you. Well, you know what makes me really happy? When you do not try to formation us in an option. Stay in one formation, that's fine. We can move things around. You start like, putting all these new formations in, you know, I mean, that, that screws us. You know, obviously, I don't know if that answered your question. I don't know. Is that what you guys see? You guys see more of the tight end here with the wing yeah. inserted between the tackle and tight end? Yeah, I mean, from our standpoint, and that's what, you know, the staff does on Wednesday, we're just going to put him down in one second. You know, I, we just don't want to ever out leverage ourselves. You know, uh, they, they were not doing that. Their outside linebacker was where our outside linebacker is. So they were getting a pin and a pull right to the corner. I mean, freaking, they pitched that thing for days. You know, that ABAC probably had 20 yards rushing that game from Somerset. You know. Any other questions? Coach. Yeah. Did you talk about that uh, post wheel? You were talking 60 40 with your call. Did you? Uh, yeah. I was trying to think if I have. Uh, I'm going to just go back a couple slides, just that arrow a couple over. Okay. And just to a wide shot. They were far coach? No, no, no. You, you can keep going. If you want to just go back to front in the blue max. Okay. I don't, uh, yeah, 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 you just keep going. That's fine, yeah, we'll, we'll play and just see the, uh, the Yeah, I'll show you here. So, 
You want to pause it right there? Yep. Okay, so let's not talk about what, the, what this guy doing motion, right? Or whatever, let's just say this motion's here, and this becomes a wheel, and this becomes a post ball, okay? Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what, what's on, spin, lock, no. Yeah, so if we if we had spin on, we'll talk about, let's go through the progression. So if we had spin on, obviously, this guy's cranking down, this guy's playing the, uh, the middle of the field, the true post player, okay? If you see, I mean, aside this guy, we, we did some different things, but, uh, but Brian's outside always. And that's to be able to see that. So, like I said, slash release for these guys, they're stepping up. They're stepping up and their eyes are going to the backfield. And just my experience with it, these guys are running a little bit differently if they're going to block you or if they're fucking trying to get out to the field for a wheel route, right? So his eyes right away, if you get a slash release, his eyes are going right to that wing. The wing's now outside, and it basically now on the outside becomes um, becomes uh, <coughs> uh, man coverage. Now when we play blue max, we play blue max. These guys are almost out of the picture. So this probably goes more to your question, yeah. okay? Where though they can help late. If they're not there, I can't get mad at them. So this corner now, either skate or weave, he's working inside and 60-40. All I mean by that is he needs to give a little bit more weight to, to the inside route, be it the post ball, just so that ball doesn't get go right down the chute and freaking score. That's really where we see more teams that are running verticals, right, right on that pop pass. They're here, one, two, and they're looking right to it. We, we just want to get him in a position so if that ball is thrown, he can put his foot in the ground, vision to break and drive. Because on, on, those, on those plays, that's the ball, the shoot ball, right? Right up the seam. Those are the big plays, right? Like I said, we're going to let this guy throw that outside route. That's why we're going to give it a little bit less. Because most of the time, these guys do not have the best arm. In Rippon's case, when we played them, when they threw the ball, they brought in a different kid. Now, they still ran some option, but we knew this kid was going to be the predominant thrower. Well, obviously, that helps. If you have a kid that can sling the ball and run option, that's a little bit of an issue, you know? But... Um, but it's, it's much harder, especially on play action, to set up as the pocket is collapsing and throw that ball. Most of the time, it's not going to be on a, on a dime. He's going to give a little bit more air. So from our standpoint, we're going to we're going to uh, skate it inside. We're going to pedal and weave as that ball's coming. I'm just 45, open and turn, and just trying to make a play in the ball. Anything else? Like I said, I have no problem setting this to you. Um, I know, you know we're a little far away. If you want to talk more, I got no problem, you know, whatever you do and try to help you out for what it's worth. Um, not saying what we do is the only way, but it works for us, you know, which you know, we'll continue to tweak some things and try to go visit some places and just like you guys are today. So I appreciate it. Obviously, appreciate the time. Like I said, if you guys want this stuff, um, you're more than happy to have it. So thanks again, guys.